too early for this? Too much? I don't want to do it. Capo Caco, you're hereby placed on Bust Watch. Yep, that ruined my day. Goodbye day. Welcome back to the Fantasy Hockey Podcast. This one pains me. It hurts. I mean, as a Rangers fan, clearly. I don't really want to make this video, but I sort of have to. Um, I think it's time to talk about Capo Caco and what's going on for the Rangers because it hasn't been pretty. He is the most dropped player today on Yahoo, um, especially after last night's game against uh, Washington. And there's a few things that are pretty concerning and that are making him pretty much impossible to hold in a redraft league, even in a shallow keeper league. There isn't that much value to him at the moment. And if you watch the Quinn Hughes video, you'll see just kind of how much upside Quinn Hughes has from a points perspective, how well he's playing and all of that. It's kind of the opposite with Capo Caco, uh, unfortunately, at the moment. And part of that has to do with his own play. Part of that also has to do with just the truth of the team he's on in the New York Rangers. So let's let's move over and start off first with his deployment and take a look at what's happening. Caco's on the second line with Brett Howden and Pavel Buchnevich. Eh, not the best line in the world. It's fine. Now, one of the things that I really don't like is, so Kako got a lot of praise, said he'd get a lot of opportunities from David Quinn. Um, and then as soon as they decided to move Buchnevich off of that top line, it wasn't Kako that slotted in. It was Kreider. That made me really disappointed because I figured that at any time, if they were thinking of shaking things up, Kako would get the first look on that top line. I, I don't, I didn't think they'd try to go for this massive, you know, true top line in Kreider, Zibanejad, and Panarin. And that's obviously what they've done. Now, part of it may be that they're trying to drum up Kreider's trade value. I, I kind of buy that, although I also don't think the teams really think like that that much. Uh, I think they do it a little bit, but not that much to an extent, especially this early if they're thinking of holding on to Kreider uh, until the uh, trade deadline. So the fact that Kako wasn't the one chosen to move up to that top line was really disappointing. And that was something that I was really looking forward to. And so that's something to watch here. But at this point, man, you've got to think that at this point now, it's pretty much Buchnevich or Kreider who's going to get it and Kako's third choice there. And I really don't like that. Also, shout out to Leos Anderson getting absolutely crushed this year by being on the fourth line. Uh, so moving on to the second power play, that's where Capo Kako is featured with D'Angelo, Adam Fox, Ryan Strom, and Brett Howden. Awful power play. <laughs> like That is a disgusting power play in a not a nice sense i obviously like adam fox um but man that is not a good power play especially when you've got one that's so good here on the first power play unit of Kreider, zibanejad buchnevich uh, truba and panarin yeah that second power play is not going to get much time unfortunately so now that we've talked about deployment and it's not ideal uh let's take a look at his stats really quick for a second here so he's played five games uh 15 and a half ish to 16 minutes of average time on ice normally that's not great especially for a forward. Um, I'm not, yeah, that's that's just not good. <laughs> he has one point so far, a 16-point pace, in case you were wondering. Of course, his ceiling is higher than that, but at this point, you've got to be wondering what is his true ceiling this year, and you're probably looking at, you know, the ceiling, the projections initially were like 55-ish points. That feels like a ceiling at this point, unless things drastically change. Um, and that's not so much because he's necessarily playing poorly. Uh, it's also a part of it. It has to do with how the team around him is playing, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, going on to him. So he, he's also not shooting very much, which part of it is is part of his ice time, um, low ice time. Uh, but also it's his line mates. I mean, his line mates suck and they don't really generate much offense. Brad Howden and his centers, Ryan Strom. Like his centers are awful. He doesn't really have people around him to help him succeed. Um, and, and because of that, his shots aren't going to be there this season unless he moves up to that top line and really gets an opportunity. And then if we look at his power play time on ice, it's it's OK. I guess at two minutes ish. It's fine, but it's only 36 percent of the team's power play. And and like I said, that power play is awful. It's just not a good power play to be on. Um, and so I would want to see him on that top power play. But I don't really see that happening anytime soon at the moment. Buchnevich looks fantastic. Um, and Chris Kreider obviously isn't going to move off of there. So there's a chance that he might get it later, but not right now. Um, and then if you look at the hits paces, 33 hits. 
that's just not good peripherals. <laughs> like, he's not shooting, he's not hitting. And look, if he is an upside of 55 point guy, yeah, you can find that on the wire pretty easily. Pretty easily, you can replace 55 points on the wire. Uh, so if we continue here to look at look at another thing, yeah, his shooting percentage is also high, 100% IPP. So there's only been one point while he's been on the ice. That's just that's just not great. So now if we move over to hockey vis and take a look at what the hell is happening here, here's his five on five with mm, minus 36% versus minus 10. Yikes. Uh, five on five with on defense. Look at this. Look at it. Plus 52%. That's not good. <laughs> that is a graph or a chart, whatever you call these things. I don't know what to call these things because it's, I guess it's a map, I guess. So it, this is the type of thing that will ex not allow you to get top line minutes. If this is the kind of defense you're going to have right now, you're not going to get top line. And that's probably why he didn't get it. Um, and I and I get it. It makes sense. Um, but that does, of course, lower his prospects for the season. And he's 18 years old. I, I think that part of it is I hope many of us were going into the season with lower expectations. I know I did. And I think he was going way too high earlier in the season. Uh, but yeah, r right now, it just doesn't look very promising for Kako. Now, let's take a look at uh, two other things here really quickly. Uh, if we look at Frozen Tools... You'll see that he's mostly playing with uh, Kreider and Strom or Lemieux and Strom or Buchnevich and Howden now. So it's pretty, he's pretty much locked into that second line role. Um, and then the revolving door of line mates and centers are just awful. And so there's really just not much he can do there. Uh, the real only good line on the Rangers is that first line. And maybe they can figure something out on that second line. I mean, I think one interesting thing will be, let's see what happens if uh, Philip Hedl gets called up and potentially they can put Hedl on that second line or they can put uh, Leos on that second line. So uh, there's still some movement potential there, but just not much. There, there isn't there isn't a lot there. Um, so that's definitely something to pay attention to, but not something I'm holding my breath for. And the last thing here is let's look at hockey reference. Uh, his offensive zone starts are less than ideal, 45.5%. So most of his starts come in the defensive zone. Now, a lot of that can be explained away by the Rangers in general suck and don't really have much offensive zone pressure. And so there's rare offensive zone starts. Uh, many players don't get it simply because it's just not there. They don't really get that many offensive zone starts. Um, and his Corsi is kind of below average, but relative to the team, he's a positive. So he's better than the rest of the team, but not that is insane much. That, that's not saying a lot at all, especially someone like David Quinn, who really wants people to uh, prove themselves, which I guess contradicts itself by saying that he put Brendan Smith on the third line at some point. Yeah, David Quinn, you're making me ask a lot of questions here. But anyways, look, the point of the matter, I don't even need advanced stats or anything to tell you that Capo Caco is disappointing. Um, and that honestly, right now, he's droppable in pretty much every league. This is the first one we're doing on Bust Watch, where he's pretty much droppable in every single league. It's disappointing to say the least. Um, I'm not high on his prospects. The Rangers suck. Um... His line situation isn't better. He's not shooting as much as I would have liked, not hitting as much as I would have liked. Like I said, I think already, of course, but the fact that the Rangers are as bad as they are and aren't gener generating shot chances or controlling the play as much as they should uh, lowers his prospects even more. So that's something to watch. Um, but I would say that he's probably not a pickup until like playoff time uh, or when the Rangers have a really good schedule and even right now, I can't even recommend him as a streamer, honestly. Like, he's done nothing. So, as much as it hurts me, Capo Caco is droppable, in my opinion, in pretty much every league. Uh, that is unfortunate, but pretty much the truth. So, thank you for watching. My day is absolutely ruined. Um, I'm going to go maybe watch some hockey and cry into a pillow. And I will catch you next time for whatever video we do. And hopefully it is no more Rangers. <laughs> Have a great day. We'll catch you next time.